So here we go, everybody. Welcome to another Meet the Oppo series, the show where I bring you the lowdown on town's next opponent. And of course, it's the big one at Portman Road in League One. Plymouth Argyle, top of League One, Plymouth Argyle, head to town. Um, we're going to be a big crowd. I'm joined by Chris to get the lowdown on all things Argyle. Chris, thanks very much for joining me. It's going to be an exciting game on Saturday. You looking forward to it? Yeah, buzzing, buddy. Always looking forward to it. I think this one's got a little bit more about it than your average Saturday afternoon or Tuesday night, isn't it? Given the, the position of the two clubs um, and the two sides in, in the league this season. Um, but, you know, for an Argyle fan, going to Ipswich, going to Portman Road is always exciting. This one, though, definitely has a little bit more of an edge, I think. It does, because when we played early in the season, of course, you guys beat us 2-1 on telly at home park. It was still early days in the season. It was, you know, late September. Both teams just getting themselves ready for the season ahead. Um, and a good win for you guys. But um, let's recap the season as a whole. And, of course, we're going to talk about the January transfer window because, you know, you guys have been making signings. Town have been making signings. You've lost a big player. We'll get on to him in a bit. But, yeah, how would you recap the season as a whole? It's, well, it's, it's been fantastic, of course. Yeah, I mean, it's been unbelievable. I think it's, it's built on last season. Um, you know, there was worries, you know, in, in the sort of close season, after, having gone some close to the playoffs, whether we'd be able to pick the team up again. But um, what Schumacher did so well was, like, all the gaps in the squad, which the fans, you know, you say, oh, we need a centre-forward, we need a centre-back. He just went about it really methodically. Uh, lots of young players in, a few experienced heads as well. Some really, really... Because the loan market is a lottery, as, as all fans will know. But we've hit, you know, almost won the lottery with our loan signings. They've all been really, really good this season. Um, and, you know, we're top of the league. Um, so what more could you say? You can't describe it anything other than a fantastic start. 50 points at the halfway mark. Um, you know, what, however way it pans out at this point in the season, there's some really, really big football clubs who in this league who would every single one of them would swap positions with us. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you guys, of course, missing out on the playoffs on the final day. and But yeah, this season, you've been like a train. Of course, you had a few disappointing results at the start of the season, but you've been been able to bounce back and, you know, unbeaten in the last six games. A fantastic home record as well. Um, let's talk about the January transfer window then, because we're in the middle of it right now. Um, we've got to talk about Morda Whitaker, haven't we? Straight away, been recalled by Swansea. You know, nine goals, seven assists, your star man, scored against town, of course, in the, the home park game. You know, how are you feeling now with him being recorded? Of course, still early days. You never know what could happen. Could he return to you guys? Well, we don't know yet, but what can yeah, you feel in that moment? Could, could he go to Ipswich? Uh, yeah, he, true. You know, so I mean, you know, listen, yeah, that, that'll pan out how it pans out, won't it? I think, you know, when these things happen immediately, of course, like you, you're gutted because, uh, you know, what do they say? Never fall in love with a lone player. And, and, then, and then you keep doing it over and over again, didn't you? And, but he was a class actor, you know, uh, and he brought a lot to the team. But one thing I would say about Argos side and Argyle under Schumacher is they're far from a one-man team. You know, we've got a lot of quality in this squad and this transfer window, I think has been excellent for us. Like, you know, and it's a big, big difference to what we've experienced previously where you're fumbling around on the last day, couple of days trying to get in, people trying to convince their family to move down to Plymouth, having all those debates, you know, where we've got, you know, quality young players who want to come to Argyle and they want to play for us. but And, you know, what happens with the loan signings? You, you've got to just take that on the chin because we've gone and done that to uh, Stevenage. We've taken Saxon early and, we, and we've gone to uh, Bradford and we've taken Tariq Wright in the last sort of 48 hours. So that is just the way it is. You know what I mean? And you don't, you don't own these players. You can't really have a say over them. But I do think that, you know, would we rather have Whitaker in the side come Saturday and for the rest of the season? Yes, but... Am I confident that I've got, I've got enough to overcome that and still stay in the top two? Yes, again. Fair play, fair play. Yeah, it's good that, for me, I always like my club to make business, get it done early in the in the first few weeks of the transfer window. Yeah, you don't want to be, you know, dead on day, making a panic buy. And as you said as well, loan signings, never fall in love because like town, we've had players like that and we've fell in love with them and then they've been recalled early or they just don't come back the following season. Um, and that's the big thing. Of course, Morden Whitaker will be a big miss um, this Saturday. And yeah, could he be popping up at town at some point? We shall wait and see. We do not know. Um, really it'll be interesting. Things is like we're not able, like so, we're not able to do what like you guys can do, or maybe Wednesday can do, and go out and say, you know, get the checkbook out and say we can sign somebody with a, with a, with a proven pedigree and and, and the, the likelihood of success is a higher percentage. You know, I've always never guaranteed, is it? Um, so we've got to take a few chances, but. We signed a kid, Ben Wayne, from um, New Zealand. And um, he's come over and um, uh, from the A-League, sorry. And um, he's come over and like he's made a cameo 
against uh, Bournemouth and had a, a header cleared off the line. Scored last night in the um, the Papa John's Trophy. Um, and look, you're looking at him and thinking, like, what we've done well, I think, is is go to the places perhaps clubs like Ipswich, Wednesday, Bolton aren't looking in the markets, they aren't looking, and see if we can unearth a gem and somebody that, like, you know, like come Saturday, your your guys won't have much of a scouting report on. So, you know, so, you know what I mean? So we got, uh, I think we, we're, we're going to do all right. And I think we, we run the club well and, like, we're deservedly in the mix at this point. Definitely. I know there's been a bit of a rivalry now starting between town yeah. fans and Plymouth because of the current, you know, you're going to when you're, you know, teams at the top of the table, um, you know, trying to fight for that position. Of course, it's going to become a little bit of a rivalry. But for me, you know, Plymouth, fair play to you guys. You know, you're recruited well. You've got a good manager in Steven Schumacher. Um, you fans, you know, you always welcome them when we go down the home park. I'm sure they'll be welcome when they come to Port and Road. It'll be a massive away following, I'm sure. Um, what is the current mood then, Chris, with the fans, you know, even though with the Whitaker getting recalled and everything going on, what's what's, your, what's the feeling at the moment? Oh, they're buzzing. They're absolutely buzzing. And, and um, loads and loads of pride. Uh, I mean, uh, we set up, I said to you just before we went on air, we set up uh, probably to try and nick a point. And if we could nick a goal at the end at boat one, which was much, much unlike us. Uh, but we've been playing other than that, some fantastic expansive football. We're putting, every, apart from Port Vale, we've won every single game at home. Um, so the home crowd, and we've had, I think we've had eight sellouts at home already. So like, if we had a bigger ground, we'll be getting much bigger crowds, you know? So we're at that point of the club where the cold club is, and the whole city is starting to buzz. So yeah, you're going to get like, I mean, we'll sell out, on Saturday, uh, and there'll be a big noisy following. I know, you know, obviously Portman Road's a great football ground as well, so there'll be a, a lot of noise from the Ipswich fans. But I think that the the rivalry stuff is, is interesting, and um, like you're seeing lots of like, you know, I mean, you know, not on Twitter. I'm not talking about that. that's mainly kids uh, getting a bit excited, isn't it? But um, uh, generally, a lot of pundits are going like, you know, so who's going up with Sheffield Wednesday and Ipswich, Jen? and almost like ignoring the fact that that Argyle are. Um, Top of the league, there was an article in the mirror, wasn't uh, there, about like Ipswich, these fallen giants in League One, Ipswich, Wednesday, Bolton, I think it might have been Pompey as well or someone else. And you're like not even mentioning the fact that there is a club sat at the top of the league, you know? So, but I think with that stuff, like if anything, that must be doing Schumacher's team talks for him. Like, you know, like Joey Barton yesterday was made some uh, pre match before that pizza cup thing we played yesterday, made some bizarre rant about. Not like in Plymouth, want us to beat us, etc. We go up there and, and put them away like comfortably, you know. So I think that I, I'm quite like taken by that sort of like fan banter, stroke sort of like club stuff, because I think actually in probably we're probably the beneficiaries of that, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think so, definitely. You, I'm sure a lot of managers do take a lot of that, um, you know, part of their fuel to part of their team talk, and I'm sure that's what Stephen Schumacher is doing. Um, Let's talk then about the team as a whole because, you know, you have got some other great players. Um, we're going to bring up the last 11 against Bolton, which, of course, as you mentioned, was a goalless draw. You got the point. Um, your captain, Joe Edwards, got, got sent off in the, the mm. final dying minutes. Um, but let's talk about the team as a whole. You know, Michael Cooper, what a goalie in goal. James Wilson, former town player, of course, returning to Portland Road once again. Experienced head. Um, but, yeah, I'll let you take away, talk about the players. And Joe Edwards, is that going to be a big miss? Yeah, I think so, because in amongst all those those positives, probably the one thing, and I mean, we won't know until the end of the season now, will we? But the one thing I'm sort of sitting here thinking, what do we lack? It, it would be experience. And if you look at all five of our, um, apart from Matet from um, Sunderland, who's got a lot of experience and is a really good player and he seems to have slotted right in, uh, we've signed four quite you know promising players, maybe ones for the future, maybe ones that can add in cameos this season. Um, so experience is a worry, and then when you lose your captain, it's, you're doubling down on that. So, but but Cooper, I think you know, I mean, you, some of your guys might not agree this, but he, I think he is by far the standout keeper in the league. Um, it's, it is good as well that both of the two best keepers are both Argyle Academy uh products as well, with um, you, your guy with um, Ingo as well. So, I think that that that's a you know, a, a great thing. Cooper's great, Wilson's got lots of experience, he says, Scar's been. He's been in and out. Um, he had quite a serious uh, injury. But since he's been back, our back line's really shored up. He literally wins everything in the air. He's, he, he's, he's a colossus at the back. I think we won't play long. I'd I'll, I'll be surprised if we played him. We'll probably play Gillespie, left-footed, centre, left-sided, centre. A really good player. Uh, Mumba, obviously. Norwich, I'm sure he'd be keen to get up and down and uh, prove his point. I would imagine as well, interesting enough, that probably he'll go to left... Um, wing back and um, we'll put uh, potentially Saxon early in. So we'll have, could potentially have two uh, Norwich related um, 
attacking wing backs at you. So hopefully, I'm sure they'll be both be keen to make a mark come Saturday, won't they? Um, Randon and Houghton, I think one of those might be swapped for Matet. And then I think um, Mayo's a class playmaker. Yeah. And then I think the the front two, I think he might make a change. I think he might bring back Hardy. Uh, he might even roll the dice and play Wayne, the lad I was talking to you about earlier from the A-League. Um, and we've got like a decent, now we've signed these players as well. We've got a decent bench as well. That's the, And that's probably the other thing to say about our side and to say about Schumacher is of all the Argyle managers I've known following him now for 30 odd years, he's the best at game management of when to bring subs on, how to change the game up. Um, you know, and when we're behind, you like unlike previous years, you never think you're out of the game because you always think he's thinking about who to bring on, how to stretch the game. And so we've got a lot of pace. So, yeah, I think whoever we play, we're going to give you a game on on Saturday, and hopefully we could, it can be like a game, an enjoyable game. It's not not one of those sort of timid affairs, you know. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. So, so what game, you know, are you expecting, you know, Stephen Schumacher bringing his Argyle side to Portman Road? It's going to be a great atmosphere. Um, the last two encounters, of course, Town won the Portman Road game last year, a, a 1-0 win. Uh, we scored very early on. But then, of course, Home Park, we've been able, you know, we've not been able to beat you guys there. Um, but, yeah, ha- what sort of game are you expecting down at Portman Road? Well, prior to last Saturday, I would have said we're just going to... Um come there and both sides are going to go at each other until one of them, everyone knocks the other one out in like a thriller, you know? But Saturday we went there and we really sort of shot up shop. I mean, you know, I think that you're going to be naive if you're going to bolt on a solid at home, a really good team. And um, they, they were coming at us wave after wave, you know, uh, and we were probably, to be honest with you, you know, uh, lucky to escape with a point last Saturday be, being brutal. But we didn't have too many clear-cut opportunities and Cooper saved us like one or two times. I hope for probably something in the middle of those two things. I hope we don't come up and shut up shop because I think we're better than that. I think we've got more than enough to come and go toe to toe with uh, Ipswich or any other side in the league. So I'm hoping that we come. You know, don't you know? I think I think we might temper down our usual sort of cavalier approach, but I also don't want us to park the bus because I think we've got more than enough to like. You know, you'll cause us problems, we'll cause you problems, and I think it'll be a decent game. Yeah, I'm sure it's gonna it's gonna show what League One football is all about, and um, some good football on there. Hopefully, it's a decent ref, Chris. Hopefully, there's a decent ref because that can sometimes spoil the party. You know, referee just making bad decisions for both sides, not just being biased with town. It, yeah. You know, it could be one of those days. Hopefully, it's not the case, but uh, yeah, it should be good, Chris. But how you feeling then, my friend? Big game. This this can sort of be the the big statement for the season in terms of where teams are at. Um, town, of course, have bolstered their attacking options. Um, both players could make their, their mm. debuts. You've got Broadhead and, of course, George Hurst. But, yeah, how are you feeling going into this one, mate? I mean, I think that, um, I mean, obviously, you know, Ipswich are a massive football club. You've got a great fan base and and uh, deserve, I mean, you know, to as a minimum be like in the top end of the championship, um, if not above. But what we'll see, I think you've touched on it there, we're going to see a, a proper occasion there, a good advert for League One. I think you're at home, you're going you're gonna to go into the game probably slightly uh, as the favourites, you know, on the basis of that. Um, and on the basis of the investment it, that's been put into your squad, both in the summer and, and, and more recently. But, like, you know, I wouldn't be, you, you know, you, you don't follow clubs, do you? You don't follow your club if you're not an optimist, like either if it's Argyle or if it's Ipswich Town, because you'd follow someone else who's a bit more successful, wouldn't you? So ever the optimist, I think we'll come there, we'll put on a show uh, and we'll win. And I think when we win, if we win, that's a huge statement for us. And I think the, the the beauty of what we've been able to do in the last couple of weeks when you've, and it's mad, the pace the pace that both clubs and Wednesday have set this season, when you draw, you count it as a slip up, don't you? Which is crazy. Like you had a draw at Lincoln who haven't lost all season at home. That's a decent point in any other conditions, you know? And you're, I saw your fans on Twitter, like, like, <laughs> like acting as if it was the end of the world, like, you know? Um, so, so I think that, um, but what we've been able to do in that little period is we've been able to just open a teeny gap, uh, which I think means we come to Portman Road a bit more relaxed. Like, so, you know, if we lose, it's not the end of the road. You were basically level pegging, you know, uh, and, and all to play for when we've played you twice. Whereas if you lose on Saturday, I think that is a little bit more pressure on you. So I'm hoping that the pressure and that Portman Road crowd as well, like, you know, like any big clubs crowd, it can work for you massively but it can also hugely work against you. You know, we get an early go and I'm sure those 26,000 fans won't be like, you know, all in unison behind the team. I'm sure there'll be, you know, a little bit of time wasting from us, a little bit of gamesmanship, a little bit of, 
you know, bad play for you guys and the atmosphere can be very different, can it? So are gonna win in, in, in essence, Sarah. <laughs> okay then. Well you got you got you gotta back your own team, haven't you? So you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't yeah, think so. of anything different, my friend. But no, it's, it's some great insight there, great um stuff. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. Any other business, my friend? Um yeah, I'm sure Christian Walton he'll be he'll be up for this game, of course, you know, with him got family who got seen tickets and yeah. he of course was a cat through and it's gonna be yeah, it's great like that sort of little um part of it, it as well. I mean it's Christian Walton as well. Is I mean, he did come back to us on loan for a little bit uh, a few years ago. We're really sad because obviously we lost him when we were in administration and plummeting through the leagues and he was sort of like effectively poached off us. But he's an Argyle boy. He's a season ticket holder at Home Park, you know, a massive fan. Um, and we wish him well after Saturday. And I'm be, being honest, and I think, you know, if there's any justice this season, if the form continues, because... Uh, Ipswich, Argyle on Wednesday have got to keep their form up to justify promotion. But if the form from the start of the season continues to the end, it would be a travesty if the three promoted clubs from this division weren't Argyle, Ipswich and Wednesday, I think. Yeah, I think definitely, mate. I agree with that completely. Yeah, Hopefully it is me, both us in the top two because yeah. um, playoffs, no thank you. Do not yeah. want that, my friend. It's well, we're going, to Wem- we're, going to Wembley- we're going to Wembley in the Pizza Cup anyway, so we're already yeah, doing the Wigan Cup devil, so... Yeah, like it, mate. Oh, double, yeah. double. We shall wait and see. But no, Chris, it's been a pleasure. Thanks very much for joining me. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for watching another Meet the Oppo episode. Bring on Saturday. Bye-bye for now.